What's up everybody? I am Impending Duff. Welcome to the channel. If you're returning for the Quick Tip series, welcome back. So this Quick Tip series, I recorded these videos a year ago for my Patreon. They remain exclusive to my Patreon for an entire year. And now I've been releasing them every single week right here on, on YouTube for you all to see. They, of course, these older ones are a little rough. They're a little kind of less focused as the ones that I do now, but I still think the information is really valuable. So today I'm going to cover a topic where I kind of reach into my past a little bit here. I am actually a licensed and I have a degree in, yes, there actually is a degree for this, taxidermy. I am a former taxidermist. So I'm going to reach into my experience from my taxidermy days and kind of relate that to how you can paint decaying bone or horns. So I kind of explain why the coloration is the way it is and why I paint bone in the color pattern that I do. Of course, it's not the only way to do things. So take any information you hear on this channel and kind of go forth and learn other processes from other people and figure out which one works best for you. But I hope this quick tip helps you out and you enjoy it. And while you're here, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and you'll never miss another quick tip product review or who knows whatever else I'm going to post one day. But thank you all very much for being here. Enjoy the quick tip. What is up, patrons? We got uh, quick tip number two for the month. What is this, number 11 overall? Today I'm going to talk about uh, what some people call decaying bone, or what I call African horns. Um, a lot of African animals will have very similar style horn coloring that I'm about to do. Most of the time, um, you'll hear me preach about like white-tailed deer and the plaque that they build up towards the pin pinnacle, pedicle, pedicle of their horns uh, closer to their heads. On these little nurglings here, I'm doing basically the opposite. The very tips of their horns are going to be the darkest. And again, you see that in very common in African plains animals like kudu or uh, gazelle, anything, anything basically in the antelope family over in Africa has a very similar style of horns. Uh, scimitar horns, um, ibex, or it doesn't matter. You guys don't care about the animals. But anyway, what I'm going to show you is quick little reference photo of that right here. All right, so this is an African Nyala, N-Y-A-L-A, -A, in case you want to look up your own picture. But just take notice of the horns here. The Nyala actually has a horn, not an antler. And the difference is horns are actually the same material that your fingernails are made up. They're literally hair fibers. If uh, I'm getting a little graphic, but in taxidermy, if you were to remove these capped horns which are actually on a bone base i'm not going to get into it but if you pull them off the animal when you're doing taxidermy it actually looks like hair at the very base of the horns towards his eyebrow there but anyway what i want you all to notice is that as it spirals up you see it go from that kind of ivory light brown all the way up to like a really deep black brown and then this is an older animal a much older animal because its tips are very ivory colored that only happens in older animals so if you're trying to depict something that is maybe a little less aged then maybe you don't put the ivory on there or maybe you put a tiny little speck of ivory it's up to you guys how you want to do it but i just wanted you guys to get the reference of of the actual animal in your brain so that you understand the work up here and then now i'm going to show you the work up essentially i'm going to be working with three colors you can start your bone work up however you want for me it was just olive flesh um, i chose olive flesh over ivory ivory tends to be a little more muted a little more desaturated where this is the ivory see how bright it is but it's still very desaturated the olive flesh has a nice kind of brown orange warmth to it so I kind of go with the olive flesh just in case I want to highlight with ivory but nine times out of ten 
I'm still highlighting with the olive flesh at the end. So it's base coated with olive flesh and then it's washed with your choosing of a brown wash. It can be Agris Earth shade. Um, I personally prefer the Army Painter shades these days because they provide less staining. It doesn't matter. Just get your model uh, based and essentially washed, right? Then we're going to do a series of two layers of glazing. I held up two fingers, but my camera's so zoomed in. Um, we're going to do a layer of two different colors of glazing. The first round is going to be dark golden brown. And again, the color is not like mandatory. You don't have to run out and buy this color if you don't have it. If you have the base set, I believe, it, you should have like light umber in there. Maybe mix a little bit of ivory, ivory into that. Just any nice kind of medium neutral warm brown will work great. Now this color is kind of like a tanned of leather look to it. It's kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, it, like a buckskin. It's a really good color. And then the very tips of the horns are going to end up being a really deep dark brown. It can be dark umber. That's what I'm using here. Can be used. You can use uh, black brown. You can use any type of really deep blackish brown or really. I hesitate to say red brown, but this is kind of a red brown. Mahogany is more red brown, but anyway, you get the point. A nice darker version of the brown, right? And that's just going to be the very end of the horn tips. So let's get into it real quick. I've already created my palette here. So here's my deep, um, my dark umber, here is my dark golden brown, and then of course I've got a little bit of shadow flesh over here. So the dark golden brown is, is a nice thin glaze consistency, um, still pigment rich, but nice and thin, whereas the dark umber is a little bit more opaque, even though it, it's still considerably transparent, right? And then the shadow flesh is thinned down, I don't know, maybe two to one, two parts thin, uh, thinning agent to one part pigment, because this is just barely going to get kissed on the very tips of the horn, so I want it to have some opacity without like being a hard line. But let me show you real quick how I do this. I'm just going to pick out one horn real quick. Let's say this dude's horn. And again, I got my moist towel. That's how I always do my glazing. You'll end up with something like this when you're done, because I've already done quite a few of these guys. Um, <clears throat> but load up your brush with your medium brown, your, your mid-tone, if you will. Dab off your glaze very lightly. And then we don't want to paint the whole horn here, okay? We just want to paint, like, the very three-quarters of it. In fact, I'm going to switch it out, and I'm going to go to... Screw it. Let's turn him around. It'll be easier to see that way. So I'm going to turn this dude around and we'll work on this one here. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way, but the nature of the glaze is going to thin it out over here and almost create the transition for you, right? So while that one's drying, I'll just hit up a couple of other ones here real quick. But don't forget the undersides. Don't forget the insides. Don't forget the front side. And essentially, you're going to build up your layers. You know, you might have to do two, three layers of this glaze. But remember, when you glaze, you start here. So the next layer, you're going to start like, I don't know, an eighth, sixteenth of an inch forward of that line. And then if you decide to do a third one, do another sixteenth of an inch forward. So you're creating that natural gradient, right? Um, cooking show fashion to try and keep these a little more quick tips for you. I have uh, already done four of them with just the golden, dark golden brown. So you can see where we're at with these guys, right? Very uh, faded from bone, essentially, to a very dark color. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab some of my dark umber. <coughs> and I'm essentially going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to pick out one horn and I'm going to start about halfway up. And I'm just going to help make it darker. Now if you want, if you're doing like a nurgling swarm like I am, you can, excuse me, you can always uh, change it up. Make one guy, <laughs> I didn't mute my phone. Um, 
make one guy's horns a little darker, make one guy's horns this color scheme, you know, switch it up. Don't be afraid to to kind of create some variance, but the point is here, we're trying to fade it out to black, but then what the cool thing is, is on some of these older animals, using our African Plains animals or, or gazelles as kind of reference, the older they get, the darker this gets, however, comma, the very tip of the horn becomes bleached out. So it's a really interesting pattern to see. Um, we'll kind of end up highlighting the very edge of it with that. So once this dries, we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out, and I am going to vary a couple of these, so I'm going to, I'm going to grab a darker black-brown just so you guys can see the difference between the two real quick. So I'm going to just tip a couple of these with this black-brown. Again, it's self-explanatory, super deep black-brown. It's still brown, but it, it tends to be considerably darker. So this is your black-brown, this is your dark umber, here's your dark golden-brown. So I've already mixed up the glaze. I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to do this little plague dude or uh, nurgling right under him right here and just kind of show off how dark we can get with that and just show the variance. I think in a in a mosh pit of nurglings like this, it's cool to kind of edge some of these to a different color. They're not all going to be perfect. Like, my nerglings look uniform and green, but if you really dig into the, the bases, each one is kind of a different color than the other. One is really dark green, one is really olive green. The shadows are really deep, you know? The highlights are really bright. When you have horde, horde bases like this, it's always good to vary them, and on some of the bases, even the nerglings themselves have different colors, like this back row is a deep green, these two front rows, this is more of a bright yellow green, and this is more of a pale green. Yeah, I like varying them, it doesn't matter, you don't have to pick each one out and turn them into gummy bears essentially, I've seen that with some of the nergling bases. Um, that's not for me, but if it's for you, go for it. Adding little changes like this to their their horns is a great way to kind of pick out some details and uh, individualize a massive horde of little mischievous demons, if you will. So here you go. There's the two different versions. You see Homeboy on top is not nearly as dark as this guy, and I kind of like this one a lot better. Let me see if I can get it nice and focused. I like this one a lot better than this one, but having that variance is really going to help with kind of individualizing a little bit. So then, we got to do this little itsy bitsy highlight of ivory at the very, very tips, like I showed in the reference picture there. So we just literally kind of just hit the tip of it. There's a that's what she said joke in there. But, you get the point, right? Kind of just boop boop. That might be too much. Very, very subtly knock the tip of the horn. And that will give you your little bit of a highlight and kind of stylizing. Give you a little bit of depth. And that's kind of that extra detail, you know? Like, some people... You ever just look at an army and it is somewhat basically painted, but it has these great little details to it that take away from, okay, this isn't like a crystal brush winner painting this, but there's these finite details that you keep discovering on every little turn of this model. Having these stupid little white highlights on the bone like that can bring some serious character to things. So take some inspiration from nature. Don't be afraid to dig around, look at pictures on Google. That's huge. I'm kind of reaching into my taxidermy knowledge for this, but uh, you know it adds a lot of detail. Once these whole bases are done, you'll kind of get the sense that there's a little more individualization in there. So I hope this helps you guys painting some bone. You can actually reverse this process minus the white tips. You can reverse this process for uh, 
dark out to light essentially so if you wanted the dark closer to their head and the light finishing out you would just basically swap the colors this way and then still highlight the very tips white to kind of bring that gradient out I hope that helps you guys. Uh, good luck, and feel free to share me share your pictures with me uh, as far as your attempts with something like this. I thank you guys so much for being patrons. You guys have no idea how much it really, really means to me. I know I say it every time, but you guys are helping me out big time, so thank you very much.